Hey everyone, this is Pamela Coey and I'm going to do a demo and I'm going to be using these wonderful Stencil Girl stencils. So a lot of you have heard about Stencil Girl stencils and um, I love their stencils. They are so clear. They're really unique. You can find so many different designs on their website and I told them I'd be more than happy to do a demonstration for how I like to use their stencils. Of course, there's at least a hundred ways you could use them. And this is only one example of um, what I'm going to show you, but I'm kind of hoping that this will be a new uh, way to use them. Um, obviously, you can use them uh, straight on top of a painting and take a paintbrush and, you know, go on top of your stencil and get um, the image of the stencil. But what I like to do is create what I call vinyl or acrylic stencil transfers. So um, that's kind of a complicated thing but uh, to, to maybe understand. But um, when I say vinyl, what I'm talking about is I'm going to be using here, this is um, golden polymer medium gloss. Okay, so it could be matte medium, it could be matte or gloss, that doesn't matter. But what does matter is that I'm going to be using polymer medium, happens to be made by Golden. I'm sure you can use other um, manufacturers if you like, but I happen to really like Golden's products. So that's one of the components here to make your uh, vinyl stencil transfer. And then the other thing I'm going to be using here to make these transfers is parchment paper. And you can get parchment paper at the grocery store. I happen to get it in uh, these larger size rolls uh, from Costco. So a lot of you probably already, you know, have access to Costco and perhaps you've already discovered this great product. I think sometimes it's kind of seasonal. You find it right around the holiday time when everybody wants to do their baking. But in any case, if you can't get the jumbo roll like this one, just go to any grocery store and look in the baking section or where they've got the wax paper, saran wrap, things like that. So for now, um, I just want you to notice that uh, these stencils here are, are three different designs and they're all really, really um, beautiful. They're organic. They're from nature. And I chose these to work with. Um, they're nice and flexible. They're reusable. They're made of this plastic. And um, if you're not familiar with their product, I really encourage you to go to their website and check out the wide, wide variety um, of stencils. And just take a look at what happens when you overlay them as well. I mean, that becomes another thing to just keep in mind because when I show you these final transfer stencils, um, you'll be able to actually get this sort of thing going on. And that's kind of the, one of the reasons I want to show you this. So we're going to start out with parchment paper. And I did cut two sheets, but I think all I really need right now is one. So I'm just going to... I have brown paper on my table just so that you can see the parchment paper better. And I'm just going to kind of tack this down a little bit. The tape does not stick to parchment paper very well, so I don't even know if this is really going to stick. Um, parchment paper, uh, the reason I'm using parchment paper is actually for that very reason. It just doesn't stick to the acrylic polymer medium. That's the beauty of it. Other papers will not give you the effect that the parchment paper does. Um, I've heard that parchment paper actually has like a bit of a Teflon coating on it. And so what we're going to do is take, uh, let's see here, grab a big brush. So I've got a nice big fluffy brush like this. It's a flat and here's my polymer medium. I'm going to run and get some water. Okay, here's my water. Okay, so I'll set that over here and there's my brush. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is take your uh, your polymer medium gloss or matte, doesn't matter again. And I happen to have it in a squeeze bottle, but you may have some other type of bottle or that doesn't matter. So we're going to put it on this parchment paper. And the first coat, uh, we're going to do two coats. The first coat will be, you know, pretty thin. And actually both coats will be pretty thin. You don't need it to be thick. So I'm going to take the brush and just gently coat the parchment paper. And whatever area that you coat with your brush is usable for this stencil transfer. So I'm going to go all the way off the edge. 
that gives me more to work with. If you need to replenish, you don't do that because you want to get to the edge. Just go off the end like this. And you know, the tape didn't stick in the end, but that's okay because once I start to put this on, it pretty much lays flat. But the edges will curl. That's what happens. No worries. It doesn't matter. here, edges, and this will dry fairly quickly so again you want to do two layers and you could do thicker layers if you want you know there's no uh, no one saying that you only have to do two or uh, you could probably get by with one but I think two is a common uh, nice thickness um, you want it to be have some uh, depth to it and if you go too thin then you know your your um your stencil may not pull away from the parchment paper, so that's why we want a certain thickness, kind of a minimum thickness. And then I've done super thick ones as well. And why would you do that? Well, it'd be because you'd have uh, more of a relief, meaning like high and low when you actually use your stencil transfer. And I'll kind of show you what I mean as we get further along in the demo. So I have gone pretty much to the edges. What we're gonna do now is just let this dry. So give it you know, a good 20 minutes or so. It doesn't take that long, but you wanna make sure that it's dry before you put on your second coat. And of course, wash out your brush with the water. Make sure you get all of the polymer medium out of your brush. Very important when you work with acrylics to do it right away. Don't just set your brush down and say, I'll get back to it in a couple hours because you'll notice that your brush is um, gonna get ruined pretty quickly. Um, if that does ever happen to you and you get acrylic stuck and dry in your brush and brushes are not cheap these days, um, my little trick for that is to use some Murphy's Oil Soap. And what I do is I put Murphy's Oil Soap into a Ziploc and I don't, I don't actually dilute it. And then I put my brush into the Ziploc so that just the bristles are in the Murphy's Oil Soap. And then I kind of like close the top of the Ziploc and let the brush sit in there for days. And you'll notice that the dried acrylic in your brush is going to loosen up and pretty soon you'll be able to wash it out with soap and water. So it's a great way to save any brushes that you think might have gotten ruined that you might have thrown away and that has saved me many times. So I will come back after this is dry, we'll put on another coat. Okay, I will be back. Okay, here we are about 20 minutes later and um, this has dried and notice that it's gonna be very um, much puckered. That's just what happens. It's, it's gonna be impossible for you to really uh, keep your parchment paper completely flat. It's not gonna happen because parchment paper is just so thin, so you can kind of see from the back that um, you know it's gonna have some ripples in it, but don't worry about that. Just let that first coat dry, and um, then let's put on our second coat. So again, I've got the Golden Polymer Medium Gloss. And just like before, you're going to put on another thin layer. But again, you can do more than two layers. Uh, instead of, you know, thin, you could do thicker layers, and I have done that as well. It all works. So it's kind of up to you. If you kind of wanted a high-relief stencil transfer, then um, you could certainly do that. But I kind of like my, um, my stencil transfers to not be too terribly thick because I want them to um, kind of, I don't know, when I, the way I'm going to use them, by the way, is I'm going to be using spray paint. Now, you don't have to use spray paint, but I like to use it for this um, type of transfer because what you get is some really nice transparent... Um, areas of your stencil that you can cut into pieces. Um, when you peel them off this parchment paper, the polymer medium dries clear. And so all you see is the uh, pattern of the stencil, and it's gonna be fairly clear because of the spray paint. 
Uh, if you've worked with stencils a lot, you know that if you use a brush through a stencil or if you use a brayer, um, the edge quality can sometimes be, you know, sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's great, but it's just not always, you know, perfect. And so I find with spray paint that you get kind of a little bit of a fuzzy edge, but you can definitely read that stencil design pretty well. And that's one of the reasons why I like to do the stencil transfer. Okay, so I'm putting this on and I'm gonna let it dry. And um, then I'll come back again and we're gonna move into the fun part, which is the spray paint. And I'm gonna be using Liquitex spray paint. I only have two colors right here, but they are acrylic based. Um, I've got carbon black and cadmium red medium hue. I'm going to be doing the spraying outside my studio because uh, it's an aerosol. And even if I were to wear a mask and you know, I could do that, but I, I just tend to like to use spray paint products outside whenever I can. So that part of my demo will go outside my studio. Okay, so we're gonna let this dry and I'll be right back. Thanks everyone. Okay, so now we've got two coats on here of this um, Golden Polymer Medium. I chose gloss. Two layers have dried. I gave it overnight. And I think what happens is like it just relaxes a little bit so it's not quite as um, ripply. Again, here's the back side. This is parchment paper with two layers now of the polymer, acrylic polymer gloss. And the idea then is to take the stencils. There's, they're white and I've got a white table so they kind of disappeared on me. But what I'm going to do, um, I don't know if you can see this very well, probably not, but let me just lift it up a little bit. What I'm going to do outside is take this whole thing out uh, outside my studio and I'm going to lay these stencils on top. So I've got three and I think all three will fit on here or they'll, it doesn't matter if they overlap, you know, that's, that's kind of the beauty of what I'm doing here because um, anyways, you'll see what I mean. So here they are just laying on top and what I'm gonna do when I go outside, uh, I'm hoping it's not too windy. You kinda wanna, if you're gonna use spray paint, which is what I'm gonna use, uh, you know, just find a place that is kinda protected and not terribly windy because you, in order to get high fidelity, uh, which means just, um, you know, you want to get the image of the stencil onto this acrylic transfer uh, as, you know, as good as you can get it. So that just means that you want it to be kind of in close contact with the vinyl. I'm calling this vinyl, but it's really acrylic. Uh, and then, you know, if it were super ripply, it'd be very difficult for you to get that. Um, it's not going to lie perfectly flat, but that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this outside and give it a spray. Okay. All right. So I've got my stencils kind of taped to this um, parchment paper that has the two layers of um, the acrylic polymer medium. And you can hear the cars outside. So I apologize. I hope you can hear me okay. I'm going to shake up these two cans. Of spray paint and again these are Liquitex spray paint acrylic. <clears throat> I've got some brown paper here just to protect the wall and behind here is um, just this this high density molded plastic that I like to use in my studio. So let me um, make sure this is all gonna be somewhat stable here. I think I'm gonna do this. Okay now you can see it probably better. All right, <clears throat> gotta shake these up really well. I only have these two colors, so, um, and these are kind of like a medium tip. I think I might have to get a new tip here. <clears throat> okay, this one works pretty well. So I'm gonna start out with the red, and then I'll go get another black tip and see what we can do with that. So let's check with this one. Okay. And we're gonna get another black tip for this can. I shall return. 
Okay, so I'm um, not sure if you can see this, but um, these are the tips. You can buy them separately and they're kind of color coded. I think I have the white and the black right here, uh, as you can see. And um, the way to clean them is I should have dipped it in alcohol to clean off the acrylic, but in any case, I'm going to put a brand new tip on the uh, black container and we have to clean this one. So, put this on top, point it away from you, and shake again. All right, let's see how that works now. Okay, that's better. All right, so now I'm going to do this middle one in black. And this one, um, I think I'll maybe do a combination of both here. I'll just um, and get the red and do the other part. With these spray cans, the way to they recommend to clean off the uh, cap here is you turn it kind of upside down, and you um, so you spray until nothing else comes out, just air, and then you'd want to like wipe off the the wet portion here, and that's where you want to get the alcohol and really clean that off. So I'm going to do that in the studio. Okay, so let's go back in the studio and see what we've created. Okay, I brought this back inside, a little bit quieter inside my studio than outside by the highway. I brought the whole board back in and just so you can see I had, this is high density molded plastic, which, you know, it doesn't really matter, it doesn't have to be that, but I just wanted a hard surface behind it because I was propping it against a building. Now that I've brought this in and this has dried pretty well, I'm going to let it dry a little bit more. But what I want to show you here is when you lift this up, what you have is just have to tug it a little bit. Okay, so let me try to lift this up again. And um, so what you have is, and you can reuse these stencils again and again, you know, there's just no, you don't have to clean them off or anything. I'm going to set that aside here, pull the black one off. All right, now I'm going to lift the black. And then here's the combination. All right. So now that you have this, you can remove it from whatever backing paper you have. Just have some brown paper here. And I'll show you why we did this. Okay, so once you have this, um, you can do so many things with it. And I like to take a cutting mat and a ruler. But you know, it's, it's gonna be easier to cut it um, either with a X-Acto knife or a pair of scissors. I've got a cutting mat here. This is just a self annealing mat. Um, but what you can do then, let's see, I can start with a pair of scissors. You know, if you just wanna free form, you can take this and let's say I wanna make kind of a crazy shape like this. Start with this here, and let's see. I really like to play a lot with shapes. So, for me, the um, the reason I like to do this is because you're given a stencil, and a lot of times, 
you want to personalize it. For me, this is my way of personalizing a stencil. So like if you buy the stencil and other people buy it, you know, you could just use it as is. That's great. But in this way, you can kind of personalize it because now you've re, you know, you've got a different shape for it. Um, so I'm going to cut out some pieces and then show you what I might do with these. I can come in here and cut out, you know, like some areas too are going to be clearer than others. This would be where the stencil is really laying closely to the parchment paper. And this is where it was a little bit, you know, I'll lift it up again due to the ripples in the um, parchment paper, but that's okay. That doesn't bother me because it's just all part of the process. And I can cut out this shape. That's where my tape was. I'm going to avoid that for now. Let's take this guy. You start collecting your shapes and, you know, kind of the sky's the limit. You can do lines. You can take this and kind of just cut out a section of the stencil. This would be a lot harder to do if you wanted to get like the very same shapes but you were just moving the stencil around on your board all the time. This way you've got, it's kind of like, it's, it's very much like collage paper. So if you're a collage artist, um, this is a very fun way to incorporate stencils. And these stencil girl stencils work very, very well with this process. So I'm going to keep cutting here and let's get some different shapes. Maybe um, do like a, an ellipse. It's so easy to cut this uh, parchment paper coated with the polymer on it. And so that's why, you know, again, you're, you're kind of making your own collage paper. I like to call these vinyl transfers or acrylic transfers, acrylic stencil transfers, <laughs> um, whatever you want to call it, you know, it's up to you. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to cut this area out. And then, you know, even areas where there was no stencil, like this area here, um, you know, this is really just acrylic spray paint. But what you're going to do then is you see on the back side is the parchment paper. You can kind of see how white it is. And you're going to peel the backing away, this um, parchment paper, which I have gloves on, so it's a little bit hard to get it started. But the thicker the polymer medium, you know, the easier the peeling part is. But you know, the thinner it is, the easier it's going to be to collage it down. So this is where I peel away the backing. And this is what I call my vinyl transfer. That's just, you know, it's just acrylic paint in whatever shape you decide to cut. That's why it's kind of important too, that you get a pretty even polymer coat there so that it, you don't end up with holes, but you know, you can kind of see how, um, Let's see if I put black underneath it. You can even overlay these stencils, you know, one over the other so that you can overlap and that gives some very cool effects as well. So let's just keep cutting and so I've got some big pieces. I've got some smaller pieces. Um, maybe I'll do some triangles. And this is just really for demonstration purposes. Um, if I were doing, you know, like a completed painting, um, you, you know, this, this is only part of what I would be doing because once you put, once you, uh, attach these stencils onto your board, you can continue to paint over them, or you could be collaging over your paint. Uh, so I'm really just trying to show you how to use these, acrylic stencil transfers once you've made them. So now we've got enough pieces and then you've got, you know, that, that extra piece there you can use again and, you know, just use it until it's gone. And imagine if you have just lots of parchment paper and lots of stencils, um, this is, uh, a, just a great way to, uh, have some pieces to work with. So then you can take your, um, paint board, I like to use just, this is a 12 by 12 inch um, Baltic birch panel with um, a gesso on top of it. And you can start to lay things out however you want with these pieces. And we're going to adhere them onto this panel. 
I do like to use limited palettes. So um, I've got red. And let's say I just have these two colors plus black and white. That would be a limited warm palette, right? So let's say I put some of this down. Okay, so now this is dry. So now we can take our pieces, kind of play with them. Um, so you can see how uh, you can see right through the vinyl transfer. And they're thin, very flexible. So there's, um, for example, how you can see right through um, down to this ochre color. And then if you, you know, here's where it overlaps the white. And if you reposition, you know, the, the beauty of any collage paper is you get to reposition it, right? And um, so there's the blue through it and then the white. So basically I can start to put these down. And it's probably best to peel off the parchment paper when you actually are ready to use it because um, once you've peeled it off, it, it can fold over on itself and kind of stick to itself. So I like to just peel it off as I need it. And I'm going to put, this is just golden polymer medium again, the very same stuff that I used on the parchment paper, to adhere. So whatever it is that you use to adhere your collage paper is going to work just fine. But I like to use the polymer medium. I guess that's pretty common. Just, um, just need enough to hold it down, really. But I'm going to put uh, some of this, go off the end. I'll stick on some more pieces. Just a thin layer is all you need. So then you can take your piece. And again, this has the parchment peeled off. It's see-through. And just be a little careful when you position it. I mean, you can kind of just drag it like this and to get it into the right spot and then lay it down. It's a process, right? Like everything. But this, this method to me has given me a lot of like flexibility and I do love collage. You want to squeeze out these bubbles because they will get trapped underneath your transfer. Um, just use your finger and just be watching it. You can kind of, you know, also take a brayer, a soft brayer if you want and kind of just, you know, be very gentle though. You don't want to be too heavy handed with it, but you can work out the bubbles that way. But sometimes I just like to use my finger and they'll just pop out the other, the end. You can see them very easily. 
It, it can wrinkle a little bit, but again, um, I look at this as a layer. I don't, you know, it, it could end up being the final layer, but in any case, it's just a layer. So even if it wrinkles a little bit, I like to just think of that as, okay, that's what happened. And I'll just make it be part of the art. Again, just work these bubbles out or not. If you want it to, you know, you may want it to kind of wrinkle over itself. That may be um, some interesting texture that you want. You can do that as well. And I think the thinner your, um, the thinner that you make this um, transfer, um, perhaps the more bubbles you're going to have potentially. So you can go over the top of it right away or you can wait, you know, but um, by doing this, I'm basically locking it in, right? So I can put more of this and just go on the top. And now it's just a layer, right? It's really incorporated into the beginning of the painting. But look at how nicely you can see right through it to the blue over here. Now when I get bubbles like this, um, a lot of times I, I do sanding somewhere along the way in the process. And what will happen is if you have a little bit of a pocket, an air bubble or creasing or anything like that, the sandpaper will actually catch on that and you'll get an interesting effect. So again, I'm, I'm pretty open to this. This is like the play stage for me and I'm not going to be too critical um, about, you know, whether things are perfect or not. I don't, that's not my goal here. My goal in the play stage is really just to have fun and that means not worrying about, you know, results essentially. Okay, so let's try some black. Where might that go? Again, once I peel the, um, and it can overlap with this. That's the fun thing is you can keep overlapping these stencils. Imagine if you were trying to take your stencil though and, you know, paint between these very inc intricate areas or um, get a really good um, replication of the stencil. Uh, I find that this, just the spray paint really gives a beautiful reproduction of that stencil. But again, because you cut it into a, a personal shape, and nobody else is going to cut the same shape as you. Nobody's going to use that in the same way that you will. So in that way, um, you're going to personalize your stencil. There we go. Comes away very nicely. There's that. Again, you can see right through it. Doesn't matter whether it's right side up or upside down. Either way works. And this was glossy side up, so maybe I want to do um, glossy side down this time. And maybe I want to overlap with the red just to give you an idea of how that might look. That could be kind of cool. Let's see. Maybe it'll come out this way. I think I'll go up maybe up there. So take some of this. Let's keep layering. Okay, now we're going to lay this on top. Still not quite sure how I want to do this, but let's see. We're going to start it like right, just a little off center. So I'm going to just drag it onto the board until I get it in line. And just, you know, when you lay it down, just like be, be um, aware that you might trap air bubbles so that um, as you, you know, don't just let it fall in place unless you want those wrinkles. That's fine too. But, but if you don't want wrinkles, you know, um, lay it down a little bit at a time and kind of just be ready to get any air pockets out. It's kind of stretchy because it is plastic and just let it fall into place. And then take this, go over it, lock it in. All I mean by locking it in is that it kind of protects it from the next layer. So if, I, if it's paint or if it's another vinyl transfer, you know, or if it's mark making, whatever it is, you know, it's just kind of going to lock it into place. And after all, this transfer is pretty thin. So by putting another layer of polymer medium, you're just making it, you know, thicker and 
So there's that. Um, just really keep going with this. So what I'm going to do with this, I will develop this into a final painting, not for this demo, but I will, um, you know, use these elements of the stencil to um, begin this painting, and then um, I will keep working on it. So, let's see here. You can lift it up. I guess the smaller the piece, um, the easier it is to get these bubbles out of the way. But you can just move it around. Really, until it's dry, you can move it around. But what a great way to start a painting um, using these wonderful stencils. And, you know, just the simplest of an underpainting here. You start to see colors, and it's, it's just really very playful. I'm going to hold that up closer. Can really see what's going on. You can kind of see through these stencil transfers, and um, you can see the gold through the this red and clear. You can see the white through the red. You can see the blue through the red, the gold through the black, and um, so it's just really a lot of fun. And um, then you can go on top of this, and you can add paint, or you can add more collage, um, more vinyl transfers, really whatever you want. So I hope that. You will try this method because it's really not hard. And again, once you build your um, your repertoire of shapes like this, um, and I've done this a lot with just you know solid colors because sometimes you want a solid shape or whatever. But using stencils is a great way to add new dimensions to your piece. So I hope you enjoyed the demo. Thanks everyone, and remember, Stencil Girl products, Stencil Girl stencils are really wonderful and reusable. Um, they're very high quality. So. Um, Hope you enjoy that. Thanks very much. Bye now.